you work, you do executive coaching with, with some very senior people. So what perspective do you have on how it feels to be that person? What sort of problems do they bring to you and how do you help them address them? Yeah. I don't know if they'd say it, but when you get to know them, they're really lonely. I had a mentor and boss of mine once, a brilliant guy named Jean-Claude Cassavant said to me, the higher you go in, when I first time I got promoted like a VP level job, and he said, remember, the higher you go in an organization, the harder it is to get anyone to tell you the truth. Surrounded by people and everyone has some sort of agenda when you're at the pinnacle of power in any kind of structure. And so getting the truth is really hard. And without truth, what data do you have to make good decisions? And so they can be lonely. Sometimes that means they will take in confidence, confidence in the organization who then maybe get outsized in the power they have because of the access. It's, and that can be challenging. So one of the things that I know that I and we, my colleague Mark Bowden, we also do some two-on-one coaching we provide is we provide a safe place and a place where they don't have to be so lonely. They can think through their thoughts out loud. They can wonder about things and not worry about, if I think, oh, how am I going to do this? People are going to hear that in the organization say, she doesn't know how to do this. If she doesn't know how to do this, how are we going to get somewhere? What's going to happen to me? Am I going to lose my job? Am I, is the company going to, I better move somewhere else. Whole catastrophizing of thought. So you can't yeah. even think out loud. So I think the loneliness is one. <clears throat> I think that the just being able to find again, a place to process without judgment on every word you say, when we forget that you know, human beings are human beings and they're fallible and they say, one thing and it can change the valuation by millions or billions of dollars things can go up and down in the stock market there's all these consequences and you have to be a you know an or a politician and an actor now and be good on camera and you have to be thoughtful and sensitive and have diversity and be strong and strict and drive to be this list of things that's impossible to be and one of the reasons i have a job is because it's impossible to be a senior mm -hmm. leader and a CEO in most organizations without help, without someone else just helping you think. And it's funny, what we do, we don't give lots of advice and say, do X, Y, or Z. We do a lot of asking questions and saying, okay, what's the outcome you really want here? Okay, are you sure? What else might be the outcome you want? Let's mm -hmm. talk through and let's make sure, okay, how might we get there? Do you have the relationships for that? Do you have the knowledge for that? What do you have to learn? How are you going to make that happen? We let them think through and we let them struggle. My friend Bob Mesta says that there is no growth without struggle. And so one of the things that we do is we create a safe struggling place for C-suite executives. Now, that's not my pitch for business. I'm just saying it. That's what needs to happen. <laughs> and it's yeah. really hard to find that safe struggling place with others in your organization. And even sometimes with others outside your organization, because the stakes are so high. And so sometimes just creating that safe struggling place through someone who helps you do it, you know, is what you have to do. That's interesting. So one of the key things that people talk about now in terms of effectiveness, the transformation, and obviously engaging with people is humility mm. in, leadership, in leadership. 